Welcome to another round of SDH's coverage of everything going on in the USL Championship. We'll take you backward before we can go forward and get you ready for the games this weekend, give you a look at all the news and notes and all of the important information that you need to know as we are through week 11 and heading toward week 12 here in the USL Championship. So let's get you backwards and get you caught up on all the results over the last seven days back in the midweek last week. It was uh, the Miami FC and Detroit City had a 1-1 draw. Memphis 901 put five on the LA Galaxy on LA Galaxy 2. Los Dos losing 5-0 at AutoZone. Golas draw on a crossover between Birmingham Legion and Vegas Lights. El Paso Locomotive continuing their recent run of form, knocking off Sacramento Republic at Southwest University Park by the score of 1-0. On the weekend on your Saturday, two postponements because of COVID-19 concerns. Uh, SC Tulsa, Hartford Athletic, San Antonio FC, and Colorado Springs. No makeup date has yet been announced. Also on the board, Indy 11 with a 2-0 win over Red Bulls 2. The Miami FC on short rest. Go to Charleston at Patriots Point and get a 4-0 win as a plus 118 favorite. Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh, our first game of the week that we're going to focus on. Two of the stalwarts in the Eastern Conference, and this one was at Al Lang, who would come out on top. Here's your answer, courtesy of our friends at the USL Championship, ESPN Plus, and YouTube. Ball is down. Sit back. Enjoy Tampa Bay Rowdy soccer. And if you're a Riverhounds fan, we welcome you as well. We're underway from downtown St. Pete, Tampa Bay, and Pittsburgh. There's one of their main targets, Albert Dequa. Four goals on the season. Former St. Louis FC. Oh, well played this time and shot off the crossbar. Cochran was out of position off his line. So relied on getting production in the last third, which they did not get in the opening quarter of the season. Ball played out of the center circle. Now here come the Hounds. They've got some numbers. To the right, it's Dixon. Dixon off the deflection of Guillen, and Pittsburgh is on the score sheet first. This is why you shoot at home. Look at Ciceroni drawing players then. Have the shot, deflection is there. It was absolutely brilliant in that game at Phoenix. Starts things for the Rowdies. Armin had a touch back to Hilton. Hilton will put it in the air on the end line. Again in a dangerous spot. LaCava sizing things up in traffic and scores! Can this man do anything wrong? Jake LaCava gets number six for the year. Ball played back in from Lewis Hilton right into the dangerous spot. Lawrence White puts it back in the mixer. LaCava just effort. Shall out Williams and Griffin to close in on LaCava and make an important tackle. Ready for it. Here comes Tampa Bay. It's Fernandez chipping and scoring. Leo makes it 2-1. Well, the dancing Brazilian gives us another samba. He's been working all night long to get into that dangerous position. Did not have a good first half, but has worked his socks off. Yeah, it's going to go with those two. The third one, I'm not sure of, but definitely Phoenix and Louisville with 73 and 67. What a presence he has brought to the Rowdy sideline. Epco Sana waiting for it. Here's Lucky. Lucky shot! Goal! The final exclamation. Just don't complicate things. Look at this. Brings it down in one touch. Bodies off the defender with the other. And just put the ball on frame. And runs to the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. <laughs> and make a play. We were so close at 2-1 though. We could have won it all, buddy. <laughs> We could have mortgaged the house. Time to celebrate. The Rowdies have got their fifth victory of the season. So four goals, three of them go to the Tampa Bay Rowdies as a home favorite at a minus 112. They get the Duke and knock off the Riverhounds by a two-goal margin. Our other game of the week, safe to say, is the shocker of the season to date. Monterey Bay going to lose city in a crossover at Lynn family stadium. And by shocker, you obviously know the end result here. Here's how Monterey Bay knocked off lose city by the score of two, nothing as a plus 1557 
in the composite, courtesy of our friends at Odds Portal. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at the USL Championship, ESPN Plus, and YouTube. There's the opening whistle, and here we go. First ever meeting between Louisville City and Monterey Bay on this mid-May Saturday night in the USL Championship. About to have a go himself, Perez, Corbin Bone. Chip back out, Ombi. Sends it across, seeking, that hits the crossbar. It may have been a defensive touch inside the six, gone awry. Ten minutes in, just the movement of Ombi is causing all sorts of problems for Monterey Bay. Hard ball across, I'll tell you what it is, would have been an own goal off. Just the movement of the front line for Loose City. It's been a joy to see for Coach Cruz. Ombi! That's going to come right back over him. <laughs> Boy, that's a lot of quality on that right foot. Whipped through, header in front. Pushed off the line by Morton. But with the opportunity, he's definitely run with it. Obviously, the, the talent is always there. Just the opportunity was in question. Lancaster goes out with an injury. Obviously, Harris answers every question. That's what you want as a striker. Murphy, header is over the line and in. Monterey Bay has the lead on the road. It's fair. His first for the club. Nervy stuff if you're Lucy in that back line. Don't know where Morton's going. Cut no man's land. Good ball in for Murphy. And Fair just wants it more than anyone. Sharpie leading Cameron Lancaster. Dia slides all the way through. It's brilliant. It's Gonzalez. It's a kick save by Jay. Can confirm that since Lynn Family Stadium opened, Louisville has not conceded first. Going on to win, although a few less games than I had thought. Ball in front, dangerously so! What a finish! Sam Gleadle! Monterey Bay leads by two! And Monterey Bay might have their hands on the best win in their young franchise's history. At Lynn, Lynn family right now. The simple two-man weave between Valeski and Gleedle. Talk about a cheeky little finish. But now it's a good opportunity here for Loose City to really understand good movement here. The return here, Jimenez! Jay! Jay recovers. Could have seen Monterey Bay on their heels. Off the crossbar. Monterey Bay, two goals in this second half. 5-5 five, five corner, bouncing all the way by and through. Jimenez on a fifth third free kick. Leaning header, that's out. And Monterey Bay goes to Louisville City and the expansion side picks up a win for the ages. So big win for Monterey Bay and they can use that kind of momentum going forward here in the season. Other games on the board, Detroit City up 2-0 very early in the first 35 minutes. Atlanta United 2 gets a goal back from Nelson Orgy before the half. But Detroit City gets one in the second half. They knock off the twos by the score of 3-1. RGV hosting San Diego Loyal. They win as a plus-175 home dog. Also, Orange County SC and El Paso Locomotive. El Paso having to fly to uh, Orange County on short rest, having played in the midweek. And they get a 2-2 draw at Orange County as a plus-229. Oakland Roots knocking off Los Dos. Rough week for LA Galaxy 2 as they lose to Oakland Roots at Laney by the score of 1-0 as a minus 135. And on your Sunday, one match, Memphis 901 continuing their strong run of form in the Eastern Conference, knocking off Loudoun United by the score of 3-0 as a minus 128. So that, lend, that leads us into the standings and lets us see where things are. And as no surprise, recent run of form, you win four in a row, you rock it to the top. Memphis 901 with uh, 11 matches played, they've got 25 points. One ahead of Lou City, who've now lost two in a row after starting out their season the way that they had unbeaten in their first 10. They are ahead of Detroit City by a uh, goal difference by uh, plus 13 to plus 10. Pittsburgh Riverhounds with their loss, they've now lost two of four. They're at 22 points at 7-1-3. and three. Tampa Bay Rowdies, they've won two in a row after losing two in a row. They're at 19 points. The Miami FC as... Uh, even Steven, as you can get in your last three, one, one, and one, you're at 18 points. Indy 11 through 10 matches played. 
They are at 17. Birmingham Legion at 13 points. FC Tulsa have played uh, 11 matches, four wins, seven losses. No draws so far in the year with a minus seven goal difference at 12. Then the rest of the uh, Eastern Conference, Hartford Athletic, nine matches played seven points. They've won two in a row to get to that. Lab United, they've lost five in a row. They're at seven points as well. Goal difference of minus 12 at Land United, too. They've also lost uh, five. They're lost, they've lost their last five, eight goals scored in 10 matches. They've given up 24. They're at six points. And Red Bulls, too, in Charleston have both lost four in a row. Uh, Red Bulls, two are at four points. Charleston Battery at one, one, and eight are at the bottom of the table. They are at four points. Western Conference, Colorado Springs, nine matches played. They are at 24 points, eight, zero, oh, and one. San Antonio FC, 10 matches played. They're at 24 points as well. San Diego Loyal at 20 points. They're one, one, and one in their last three. Phoenix Rising, 10 matches played, 18 points are in fourth. El Paso, they are at five, two, and six, 17 points. They are in Fifth, Vegas Lights are in sixth, having drawn four of their last five. That's an interesting line at four, four, and four. RGV is at five, oh, and six. They're at 15 points. That would be where the playoff picture would start if everything started as we are listening to this particular show. Sacramento Republic, they've lost uh, the one match. They're one, one, and one in their last three. They've lost two of five. At four, three, and three, they're at 15 points and eighth. Los Dos with their two big losses. They've now lost three of four. They're at 14. New Mexico United are at 13. Orange County SC, they have won two and drawn two in their last four. So they're at 13 points as well. Goal difference now is a plus two. Oakland Roots with uh, two, six, and four. They have drawn three of their last five, and they're at two, six, and four. 12 points, Monterey Bay. They've won two of their last three. 3 0 and 7. They've given up 25 goals, though, in their first 10 matches. Goals against of two and a half. They're at nine points so far in the Western Conference. So that sets us up for all of the uh, matches that are going on this week. And we'll start you off with a big one on Tuesday night. New Mexico United and Phoenix Rising. It is uh, New Mexico United at plus 138. They are at home at the lab. Your draws are plus 268. And Phoenix Rising are a plus 145. Also looking at the remainder of the schedule coming out of the midweek here in May and we'll take you to a lot of activity on Friday, Saturday, Friday and Saturday to finish up your month of May. Friday night football, it is uh, Red Bulls 2 hosting Birmingham Legion at Montclair. That's at 7 o'clock, 7.30 at the Fraction. Atlanta United 2 hosting Orange County SC in a crossover. 10 o'clock at Cashman, it is Vegas Lights hosting El Paso Locomotive. Saturday, a lot of action in the USL Championship. It is at 2 o'clock at Lynn Family, Loose City, NFC Tulsa. 4 o'clock at the Mike, Indy 11 hosting New Mexico United in a crossover. 7 o'clock at Trinity Health, Hartford Athletic, and Phoenix Rising. 7 o'clock at Segra, Loud United, and Charleston Battery. 7 o'clock, Ricardo Silva and Boca Raton. It is the Miami FC and the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. 8.30 at HEB Park, RGV hosting San Antonio FC as a part of Copa Tejas. 10 o'clock at Cardinal, Monterey Bay hosting Colorado Springs Switchbacks. What can Monterey Bay do as an encore? 10 o'clock at Laney, Oakland Roots hosting Sacramento Republic. And your last match for the month of May in USL Championship. 10.30, Dignity Health Sports Park, Los Dos hosting San Diego Loyal. All the news that you need to know, you can sign up for the league newsletter. Do that at uslchampionship.com. And you can also vote for uh, goal of the week and save of the week. When it comes to uh, fans' choice for goal of the week for week 11, here are your choices. Lucky M. Kosana uh, for Tampa Bay against Pittsburgh. Emilio Icaza for RGV against San Diego Loyal. Antoine Opino for Detroit City against the Miami FC. Florian Delo for the Miami FC against Charleston. Philip Goodrum for Memphis 901 against Loud United. And remember that uh, fans' choice for goal of the week, you can vote on that. It is once it's released, you can vote until Thursday, traditionally Thursdays. This go around Thursday, May 26th at noon. Fans' choice for save of the week, you can vote. That comes out on your Tuesday, and that goes until Friday at noon. So goal of the week, released on Monday. Vote until Thursday at noon. Save of the week. It is released on Tuesdays, and you can vote until Friday 
at noon. So be a part of the uh, process at US, uh, for the USL Championship. And vote for your uh, fans' choice for save of the week and goal of the week. For the uh, championship team of the week in week 10, uh, Milan, I- 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 Milan Iloski is your player of the week, presented by our friends at Konami eFootball. Uh, for uh, Iloski, came in the offseason, scored his second hat trick of the 2022 uh, USL Championship regular season, recorded their second five-goal half this season, five goals against Tulsa in the opening 45 minutes. Iloski came in in the ninth and got his hat trick 63% of the ballot over Cameron Dunbar from Los Dos. The rest of the team of the week for week 10, it is Kevin Silva in goal for Pittsburgh Riverhounds, Mitchell Tainer for San Antonio FC, Brent Richards for Orange County SC, Zach Carroll for Memphis 901 with your back line of three. In the midfield, it is Amico Caningas for uh, Orange County SC, Maxi Rodriguez for Detroit City, Aaron Malloy, Memphis 901, Lewis Hilton for the Tampa Bay Rowdies, and Eloski for Orange County SC. First hat trick of his professional career, fourth in OC's history in that match against FC Tulsa. Cameron Dunbar and Russell Ciceroni join him up top. Your bench, Alex Tambakis of New Mexico, Robert Coronado of RGV, Alex Lara of Vegas Lights, Jeremy Kelly of Memphis, Chris Weehan of New Mexico, Jake LaCava of Tampa Bay Rowdies, and Corey Herzog of Hartford Athletic. One other quick note before we go, a signing for Oakland Roots. They brought in goalkeeper Timothy Cyrell as a USL Academy signing. The 18-year-old has uh, previously joined Project 510, Oakland squad in the USL League 2, ahead of the start of the season this month. High praise from Jordan Farrell from uh, the Roots from the technical side, a native of San Jose, California. Sorrell is a product of De Anza Forces Youth Academy and Lee High School. So uh, congrats to Timothy Sirell of San Jose, California, being moved up to the club's first team roster from the League Two's Project 510. Once again, don't forget to share and follow along on the USL Championship on all their social media platforms on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. And go to uslchampionship.com for all the news and notes that you need for everything going on in the league very very busy weekend to wrap up the month of may here as uh, we are in week 12 of the season for the usl championship thanks for taking every step along with us for everybody here at sdh i'm just john played safe everybody enjoy the games